Hey guys, happy new year and welcome back to my channel. I'm Cora. If you've never been here, welcome. I do a lot of DIYs throughout the house. I do homesteading, I'm a mom. But if you are not new here and you've been here for a while, there's been a lot of videos that I was working on or footage or projects that I was working on that I never put those videos out. We went through a move, COVID happened 2020. I went through some sort of like, I don't know, a little funk with some anxiety and self-doubt when it came to YouTube and putting my videos up. And I'm kind of just trying to push through it and I'm going through all of my old footage and I've decided that all of those videos that I put together that I was going to put out, I'm gonna go ahead and try to start putting them out. I started by putting out this storage mudroom type organization one that we did probably about a year and a half ago. And the next video that I'm gonna put out is this one you're about to see, which is the Farmhouse TV Stand Makeover. It was a commissioned piece that a friend of mine sought me out and asked, hey, I've got this old TV stand. It's got some damage to it. Could you fix it and turn it into something with the new style of the house that we're going for? Of course, and it came out beautiful. I scrummaged to get a like a finale photo of it for you guys to see, but I did my best. This footage is from about two plus years ago. It's from the old house before we moved, so that's why it will look completely different. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this video and I have a lot more coming. I am planning to redo the kitchen cabinets and the countertops in our new kitchen here. So you'll be able to see all of these cabinets get turned and the countertops turned into one of those granite things that I do with the epoxy. So I think that'll be a video that you guys will enjoy. That's coming up this year, one of the projects that I'm excited about. So, all right, enjoy and I'll see you guys on the next one. Today we're gonna to be working on this beautiful piece of furniture here. Now, this piece is going to be getting a farmhouse makeover, like farmhouse style makeover. It's going to be getting white on the bottom and then it's gonna be getting like a dark gray glaze on the top. I'm super excited about it. But first we need to work on getting this top piece here taken off. So I'm gonna try something I've never tried before, the citrus dip citrus strip and I'm going to do the little tester part that says for like 30 minutes it says or for up to 24 hours so I'm gonna put a little bit on here test it tonight see how it looks in the morning and if or even in like 30 minutes see if it needs to last all night whatever and then we will check back in so I'm gonna put I think a little test sample somewhere probably on like the back corner as you can see we'll clean it and stuff later but we're gonna put a little sample right here and see what happens all right we're gonna leave that for about 30 minutes we'll come back and check on it see if it scrapes off and if it does a good job then we'll go ahead and cover the whole thing and leave it overnight to strip this top layer we, that's the first thing we need to work on and then I can sand all that down and then we'll worry about staining and doing the top and then we'll work our way down. I like to work my way from top to bottom. That way if anything drips down or whatever, I can take care of that and then do the work there. I'd hate to do the work there, come up here and have something mess it up and have to do it again. So I just work the way gravity and allows me and I work from top to bottom. Just like when you're cleaning, you work from the top to the bottom so everything just kind of goes down to the floor and then that's your last step. You sweep up and clean the floors, right? So that's what we'll do here. We'll give it some time. And that worked like a charm. All right. So it only took about 30 minutes to get that actually to where I need it to be right there. So what I'll do is tomorrow when I wake up, I'll put a nice thin coat, nice even thin coat on there and then give it about 30 or 45 minutes and then we'll come out and scrape it off. Okay, 
Okay, so it is day two. We're going to go ahead and coat the top of this with the citrus strip and then get this all ready to go. back in about 30 minutes to check on it maybe maybe an hour because we're just doing the top here today So I want to test out this weathered gray stain. I'm going to test it out here. I want to do just the weathered gray and then I'm going to test out a blend of the weathered gray with a little bit of a brown stain mixed in with it because I think I want a mixture of a little bit in between that. So we'll see. Let's give it a go. So here I'm experimenting. I've got just the gray sitting there for a few moments. And then I have a blend of the gray, black, and brown mixed in there. If you can see, it's a little bit more streaky. And then this one is just curing with the mat, and then this is the wax on top. So, I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. Let's see how we feel about this side. I'm going to wipe them both off in a few moments, and then we'll see which one we like better. Good burn, Sam. Oh, touch me, turn me on. 
Time to ask her if she likes the lighter one better or the darker sampled one better. And then she will be the decision maker. This is what we're currently at and I'll do one more coat so that way when I put a gloss on it's nice and defined. And then this is my custom concoction. Well folks, she chose the dark one. I'm excited that's the one that I liked. So we're going to go ahead and slap a layer of that on. going to start with the bottom. So what I need to do is take and wipe down the entire thing to get off any of the dust and stuff you see here. I need to sand down any areas that might have raised parts. You see inside here where there's some stickers. We have to make sure we get those off. wood filler here to fix this chewed up edge of this dresser or this TV stand because the dog had chewed it off but they, we want it to match the other side so I'm going to just plop some on and it's quite thick so I'm going to just shape it up and then let it dry and then once it's dry I'll come back and I'll sand it up and get it you know really good and smooth to that shape. It is a paintable filler which is why I love it so much so you just you know goop it on, shape it, let it dry, sand it, and paint it, and it's good as new. Gonna allow that to continue to dry for probably several more hours before I come out and sand that, and then we'll give it several coats, get evened up there. And then we also need to bring in and start painting the accessory pieces here. I think I'm going to take those inside and work on those. Get this stuff cleaned.
cleaned up, I'll use aluminum to wrap up my roller so that it stays fresh and then stick it inside one of those plastic bags, seal it up nice and tight. And then I'm going to rinse the brushes and such and then just stick them in another bag just so I can keep them all together and know where they are. Get my paint closed up. I will tape off the glass here and then just paint all of this and then I have all of the hardware in here so I don't lose it. So, yep, I'm gonna take this stuff inside and get that going. we do any kind of glazing I'm going to put just a coat of natural wax on the outside that's going to be like my base coat so that I can then add more and do whatever I want to the outside and if I make a mistake this protects me and allows me to just be able to wipe it off this is like a barrier layer so that's why the first layer of being just plain natural or clear is most important normally I would use like an old sock that I have, like a white old sock. But these Viva paper towels are perfect as well. Let's see, it's kind of like an orangish color. Looks like that. Just gonna wax on, wax off. So now I'm going to explain the technique that I've been using throughout the entire video for the top, for the sides, for the insides, everything. It's what's giving it this antique aged look, more distressed if you would. And so what I'm doing is I'm using the same color tones that I used for the top, the same browns, the stain, the black and everything. And I'm just using the paintbrush to smudge it on in a very random order and I'm using this very rough bristled brush to smudge it out and give it this texture and then I'm using a wax if I make any mistakes I'll go over and I'll wipe it off with the clear wax as I mentioned earlier in the video I coated everything with one coat of clear wax before I started doing any of this as a barrier layer and that barrier layer will act as a protective layer so that if I make any mistakes I can just kind of wipe it off using wax wax on wax is like an eraser it erases what you've done the work so if you haven't let it cure yet or dry before you put the next layer it just wipes it right off that top so because i haven't allowed this to dry and i've made the mistakes i can just do it while it's fresh with the brush and getting the stroke and the technique it just took a little bit of practice i figured out which one i liked and i went with that i also consulted my client which is 
who this piece is for as this is a commission piece and they decided what they wanted so just as you watch you'll see the technique that i used and it's really not that difficult it's very random i don't do it in any kind of order because then it would look too structured and it's time to reassemble i need to put all of the hardware back in get the doorknobs back on all of the doors get those reassembled and screwed back on make sure that there are no paint marks on anything get the shelving put back in and then everything gets one last final waxing coat and then the top gets sealed with a couple coats of polycrylic to give it a nice shine mm -hmm. 